It's been quite a ride for Ethereum as we've gone from the lows of $800 all the way up to $2,000 in the past couple of months. However, it seems like the steam has kind of worn off a bit and there's been a lot of FUD going on recently regarding sanctions against the Tornado Cash as well as some of the Ethereum miners threatening the network to go ahead and freeze the liquidity in some of the liquidity pools on Uniswap and some other uh, protocols. So is it really safe to go ahead and jump into Ethereum now or is it more of buy on the rumor, sell on the news type of deal. So in today's video, we're gonna cover all this news in depth just for you guys so you can understand exactly what is going on and decide for yourself if you wanna go ahead and jump into Ethereum or go ahead and wait till the steam dies down a bit and it looks like a little bit more of a safe investment. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So guys, before we get started, again, I want to just introduce myself. My name is Mac. This is Cryptstars Taking, your number one source of DeFi crypto news on the tube. Welcome to the channel. It's really great to have you guys here, and I'm really excited to go ahead and share all this awesome information with you guys. Let's go ahead and dive right into our first piece of news today, which is... On the Bitcoinist, as you can see here, Ethereum miners to freeze liquidity pool after hard fork. This is pretty big news. It looks like there are some potential hard forks that are gonna be happening with the Ethereum merge and a lot of the, uh, the Ethereum miners, it looks like they are declaring some sort of technology for freezing liquidity pools. And this basically means that anybody who has their liquidity in a liquidity pool for Ethereum, they're basically saying, hey, we can freeze your funds and lock it in. Then uh, they're, they're threatening to like go ahead and activate this freezing mechanism if the merge is not canceled. This will basically compromise the customer's FW tokens that are deposited into different liquidity pools and the listed pools that could be affected include Aave, Compound, and Uniswap. So this basically means once the merge happens, you will not be able to withdraw your tokens from the liquidity pools. They will be locked in the liquidity from then on. So make sure if you guys are deciding to try and bank off of one of these FPOW forks, just make sure you take your tokens off of, out of the liquidity pool before the merge happens. Otherwise, this could quite possibly be frozen in the liquidity pool. Now with this plan, the group revealed that their freezing action would go and not include any staking contract that deals with a single asset. However, the FW Core advises customers to remove their deposits from all liquidity pools. So like I just said, make sure you guys stay safe, remove all of your Ethereum from the liquidity pools before the merge happens. Now with reactions to the sort of miners plan, there has been a really, really interesting sort of outburst on Twitter as well as other social media networks. Most crypto big shots and influences are not left out of the reactions. However, a developer and blockchain auditor FUBAR questions the group's capacity to actually perform its ridiculous plan. So it's, it doesn't seem like a very easy thing to do. And it's kind of weird how they could be able to do that with this fork. They would have to actually change the base protocol layer code in order to be able to freeze this liquidity. And they would have to change private keys as well, I believe. So I'm not sure exactly how they would go about this. So also the CEO of Gavium Corp, Alberto Rosas, doubts the decentralization of the Ethereum blockchain. He maintained that this move is huge for a small group to accomplish. For him, the FW chain may end up being a slow centralized chain with no market value. So since there is only going to be a small group of probably POW validators on the old Ethereum proof of work, that means that it's going to be very centralized and small and it's, it's going to be prone to censorship, just like this liquidity mine pool freezing. And to go along with that, this kind of jumps into our next article, which is a, a lot of people kind of fudding the centralization of Ethereum and some of the censorship actions that have been going on on the Ethereum network. So our next article, crypto researcher points out Ethereum's most titanic threat after the merge. In light of the US Treasury's Department of Office of Foreign Assets Control, they went ahead and sanctioned Tornado Cash's transactions earlier this month. The crypto researcher and founder of Cyber Capital, Justin Bonds, believes that investors and developers are currently at crossroads following the U.S. sweeping censorship attempt. If you've paid attention to Twitter, you've kind of seen Vitalik's outburst against the validators and some of the people who are developing on Ethereum. They went ahead and censored Tornado Cash's smart contracts, which basically makes it a CDC, which is exactly what we're trying to fight as crypto investors, right? If Ethereum is able to be censored, it's basically a CBDC. According to Bonds, the biggest threat to Ethereum comes within the form of social slashing and unclear governance. So because there is no clear governance, 
there is a lot of hype that's being built around certain things around certain bad things such as tornado cash and the pro censorship people are able to take advantage of this news and push blockchain technology to being more centralized and more censored with the new slashing mechanism that's introduced with the ethereum proof of stake basically if you're a bad validator or you're doing something to go ahead and you know produce double blocks or you're trying to be sort of scandalous on the ethereum blockchain there's a slashing mechanism uh, it basically put into the, net the protocol now which means you can lose part of your bond in the network if you do some nefarious acts ethereum's biggest threat post merge forks social slashing and unclear governance so as we talked about the ethereum proof of work uh, group they're going to go ahead and do a lot of censorship on the liquidity pools and the social slashing and unclear governance this basically means that Nobody is really sure where Ethereum is going because of the unclear governance model. So as you all know, I'm into Tezos. There's a very clear governance model, which means that they all have a very, very strong ethos. However, with Ethereum, it's very tough because there's no centralized governance. People can't vote on things. And therefore, uh, basically bigger entities can take advantage of social media and hype to push their prerogatives. Bonds harbors the opinion that social slashing deprives people of their property and self-determination rights. He goes as far to claim that the proposed Ethereum social, social slashing represents a greater risk than the OPEC regulation. To go along with this, there are two more critical steps of the merge, the Ethereum merge, and those are Bellatrix and Paris. And Bellatrix is slated for September 6th, and basically Paris will take place when the Ethereum hash rate is, hits a specified level, and that's basically going to occur right around September 15th. So that looks like the final date for the end of the merge for Ethereum which means that basically all these issues need to be kind of sorted out by then or mostly sorted out by then or else, you know, the price could probably tank quite a bit. Now, to go along even more with this censorship thing, we could talk about Ethermine. The largest Ethereum mining pool no longer produces blocks containing the Tornado Cash transactions. And basically, they're censoring the Tornado Cash smart contracts for people who are basically, well, there's a lot of scammers out there, right? I mean, we've all pretty much all been scammed, right? It's pretty crazy the amount of scammers on Ethereum right now and using these smart contracts and using you know, nefarious methods to get your Bitcoin and then funneling it through the Tornado Cash. Well, I think the point is here is not to go push censorship, but it's to push more due diligence on the part of the users, as well as make better uh, smart key, uh, private key sort of uh, hard wallet easier to use. And I think that is something that's coming, but in the meantime, we have to be really careful as users. We do not want to go for the censorship route. Ethermine has not produced a block that included Tornado Cash transactions during the time frame shown below. So you can see that Ethermine has decided not to go ahead and include any of the Tornado Cash transactions, which means if everybody does that, Tornado Cash smart contract is basically useless. None of the transactions will go through. So why does this matter? Recently, the US via OFAC sanctioned the use of Tornado Cash, making it illegal for any US entity to interact with the protocol. So in response to that, Circle, which is the issuer of USDC, has blacklisted USDC on the Ethereum networks so that any holder who has interacted with the Tornado Cash smart contract would no longer be able to interact with this smart contract. So there's a big issue with this, and a lot of people have pointed out, especially Aave, they went ahead and pointed out a huge problem with this. What will happen to users who are targeted by such an attack in the future? So if you send somebody, your boss, for example, who has Ethereum, and you want to blacklist their account, what if you send them some tokens from the Tornado Cash protocol? They will be blacklisted by USDC, which means they'll never be able to cash out on their basically just the, the tokens that they owed just because someone didn't like them. Is that right? Please let me know what you guys think in the comments. Personally, I don't like this censorship idea. I think it's a very, very bad idea. Um, I'm really hoping that Vitalik can push this across the network and that all the other social media influencers can push the non-censorship route and more of the sort of self-help, learn how to protect your private keys, as well as use a hardware wallet and the developers to go ahead and push easier ways to manage private keys. That's, that's the most important thing. This censorship route, no good. All right, so Vitalik Buterin was very pissed about this. He said that all of the, all the validators who are complying with these sanctions should have their F stake burned. You can check out that article. I'm not going into it in this video, in this video today, but it's not possible. It is not impossible technically to propose blocks with TC ignore the, from the transaction pool, but the fewer validators are under US regulations, the better, of course. So 
It sucks to be a US validator, and I understand that this is the way they have to go, but hopefully this doesn't actually pan out in the end. I really don't like it. A lot of people are lashing out on Twitter and talking about how bad this is. Um, personally, yeah, I, I wanna know what you guys think. I don't think it's that good. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the next steps of Ethereum POW and why it will not succeed after the hard fork. The Ethereum heart blockchain is all set to undergo the awaited merge next month in September. A lot of people are saying that, especially BlackRock, they're saying that the Ethereum POW chain won't survive, and there are a few pretty good reasons why. Leveraged against the formerly asset-backed tokens into FW tokens. So at the same time, FW, FH holders will simultaneously rush to sell the free FW tokens received against the FUSD. Now, Grayscale says that this will lead to a disproportionate selling pressure on FW. Now, in response to this, the F miners have, of course, said that they're going to freeze the liquidity pools, so this will not be possible. But they cannot freeze any of the FWs that is actually in your underneath your MetaMask or underneath your Ethereum account, just the liquidity pools. Not so strong support for the hard fork. Some of the top blockchain players like Chainlink, stablecoin players like TetherUSD and Circle, and many others who have distanced themselves from the fork. So a lot of the big players are staying away from FW and trying not to mess with it. Uh, you're not going to be able to cash out your USDC from FW, I'm sure. People are going to be rushing to sell for F Ethereum, which who knows if that's going to be possible. Interestingly, Grayscale believes that FW also doesn't pose a major threat to Ethereum Classic. Supporters of continuing proof-of-work version of Ethereum might find that the complexity of an FW fork may not be worth the effort when a stable version of the network exists in Ethereum Classic. Ethereum Classic has been running for years. Why would you try and fork Ethereum again when you can just go to Ethereum Classic and keep your assets safe and strengthen another already legitimized POW chain? Now let's go ahead and head over to our next article. What could be the impact of the emerge on ETH trading? There's a lot of selling pressure that is going to happen after the ETH merge. Who knows if it's going to be ETH work, FW, or if it's going to be the new ETH. According to In The Block, researchers at Lucas Otomuto, selling pressure will be removed as 25 million worth of ETH would be rewarded to miners for securing Ethereum. This is a green marker for me. This means that Ethereum price will go up. This one down here, it is also important to note that the token rewards for staked ETH will be 87% lower than those given to miners. So this is kind of mishy-washy to me. There's still going to be a lot of miners that are getting ETH rewards, but it's slowly moving over to the POS system. Moreover, staking rewards as well as staked ETH continues to be locked following the merge until the Shanghai fork. Basically, nobody who is staking their Ethereum right now, they won't, won't be able to unlock after the upgrade. They're going to have to wait six months. So you don't have to worry about them selling off. And so that's another green mark for me. A bit of a red mark for me is down here. In fact, the weekly fees on Ethereum have breached their lowest point since May 2020. So basically because the Ethereum fees are going to be very, very low, this means the less ETH is being burned, which means that ETH isn't quite as deflationary as people are would lead you to believe and social media would lead you to believe. The fees have to be high in order for ETH to actually become deflationary. So back in the peak of 2020, 21, there was a lot of fees, so that would have been deflationary at those fee targets. But right now, it's it's not going to be deflationary at all. So another green point is the exchange inflow volume received a 19-month low of $14 million. So it looks like a lot of people are not storing any of their Ethereum on exchanges. They're pulling it out to go ahead and hold in their in their cold wallets or just you know wait up for this merge. So that's really bullish for Ethereum. However, it does mean that there could be a huge inflow to exchanges after the merge. Last but not least, the recent Ethereum all core development team meeting also confirmed that the developers are very confident and there's no severe issues on the technical front regarding the merge right now. So that's very bullish, super stoked. On another note, Ethereum slides to 1500 as hype around the merge dies down. Now this doesn't have to just do with the merge, this has to do with the overall crypto market. We are going into another month where the Federal Reserve will go ahead and announce their Fed rate hikes. But at the slid to $1,500, and it looks like we are going down to the support level of $1,545. If that breaks, Ethereum could crash even further. And some analysts are saying that we are going to go all the way down to $750. Now, another note, even though the price of Ethereum has suffered from a decreased hype, it has not stopped investors from taking advantage of staking on the network. The Ethereum 2.0 contract has been hitting new milestones with staking since the date of the merge was announced. The stake network has surpassed 13.3 million, which accounts for about 11% of the total supply of ETH on the market. So that's very bullish for the Ethereum price following the merge. Very excited to see if Ethereum will go up 
following the merge or if it will go ahead and shoot down as people rush to sell their Ethereum and Ethereum W after the merge. So yeah, that's it for today's video. I hope that kept you guys update and informed. I really appreciate you guys viewing the channel and any feedback you guys have for me, I appreciate it. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about the video. Let me know what you guys think about all of this crazy news coming out for Ethereum. Are you bullish? Is Ethereum going to the moon? Or are we going back to the grounds as the Fed hikes rates next month? All right, guys, you guys have an awesome day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.